And welcome back to News Channel. I'm Todd Vander Hayden. True North politics time now. Looking at the biggest political hits and misses in our country in 2016. What were the gaffes and what were the great moments? There was a lot of politics that went on in our country over the past year. To weigh in, we've got our True North politics panelists standing by, Liberal commentator Lisa Kinsella, Toronto Sun editor-in-chief Adrian Batra, and NDP commentator Tom Parkin. All right, Lisa, let me start with you. What was your biggest hit of the year? Who had the biggest or which party had the biggest hit? Well, I don't think it would surprise you for me to say Justin Trudeau was the biggest hit of the year. You know, a year after we won an election, uh, we we're still riding high. If an election were held tomorrow, we'd still hold a majority government. And that's with the Liberals implementing almost 30 promises that they made during the election and a prime minister who's had to make some hard decisions. So I think Justin Trudeau takes it home this year. What about you, Adrian Batra? Well, I'm going to give this one, uh, look, there's a lot to choose from. Um, but uh, I'm going to give this one to uh, Conservative MP from Alberta, Michelle Rempel. Uh, one of the few times you get consensus in uh, Canada's parliament, but she did. She managed to get every single member of parliament to support her motion to recognize what's going on with the Yazidis overseas of being killed by I uh, ISIS terrorists, recognize that as a genocide, and of course then giving priority for um, Yazidi women and children to be um, asylum seekers in, in our country. I think that is quite a significant and underreported story. And I think um, Ms. Rempel, as, as the, you know, the critic for the area, really gets, uh, understands what's happening, has been a champion for it. And uh, for me, that was quite a significant moment this year. Tom Parkin, your take. What do you think? Democrats put out on their own leader, Tom Mulcair, at their convention back, back in April. Mm -hmm. I mean, he walked in there. Uh, most people on the floor, most people in the media were wondering whether he was going to get 70% or not. He ended up not getting 50%, uh, <laughs> throwing the party into disarray for, for a lot of the year at a time when the Liberals were backpedaling from a lot of promises and the New Democrats weren't there in a strong enough uh, way to hold accountability there. So, Interestingly, toward the end of the year, he's performing well in the House. There's going to be a leadership contest that's going to start in January. So we'll see if 2017 is a year of redemption for the New Democrats. There we go. A political hit, if ever there was one. A different kind of take it's on It's amazing what happens when there's no expectations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we want to be magnanimous because I know you guys sent us some of your other ideas. And Lisa, you did say that you thought Ron Ambrose had done a pretty good job as interim leader this year. I did. I thought she did a fantastic job. And I think most conservatives are probably kicking themselves that they can't choose yes, her right. <laughs> to be the, the permanent leader. When you look at the, the people who are running, you know, Kelly Leach and Kevin O'Leary, I mean, they're disgraceful in terms of the comments they've made. So I think, Rana, not only has she been as strong in the House of Commons, she's led the entire CPC team to be strong in committees in the House of Commons. And as MPs in general. So I think she's done a fantastic job. What do you think, Tom Parkin, about that, about uh, the work that Ron Ambrose has done here? Uh, I think it's been adequate. I, I'm not of the, you don't think it's particularly stellar. I think the Conservatives have a problem on their hands with having so many people in the race. You know, you can't have 14 or 15 people vying for the leadership. It just doesn't work. People lose attention. And in that big field with so many people that nobody can really identify, I think Ron will be able to look good just by comparison. What's your take, uh, Adrian? Uh, your read on this, I'm curious. Well, I think that um, considering the circumstances by which she was presented, uh, look, the Conservatives still got 100 seats in the House after the last election, after having been in power for 10 years. That's quite extraordinary. She did inherit um, a disgruntled party and somewhat fractured, uh, fractured party. She was able to, um, as I think Lisa has already articulated very well, bring forward the conservative message for Canadians that um, needed to be, continues uh, to be heard in this country, needs to be heard. Committees are a frustrating thing to go through. Putting forward bills when you're in opposition is a frustrating thing to go through, especially when you were just, you know, a sitting cabinet minister just a short year ago. I think she's handled it well. I think that she's tried to bring all par sides of the party together. She's done a very good job of staying out of the leadership race, which I think is, is, is noteworthy. But moving forward, um, the party itself is going to ha have a big challenge in 2017, just like I do believe the NDP and the, and the governing Liberals are as well. All right, let's move on from uh, hits to misses. And again, let's start with you, Lisa, on this one. Yours has to do with Kelly Leach. Yes, I... It is a disgrace, Kelly Leach, in general. 
Yeah, but particularly when she, during the last election, had been the one standing up talking about the barbaric cultural practices tip line, you know, we're having neighbors tattling on each other, and now she's styling herself as this kind of Trump North type of candidate. And as a liberal, I would love for the conservatives to choose her as her leader, because it means that Justin Trudeau is going to be prime minister for a very long time. But it, it scares me in terms of where potentially the Conservative Party could go to, and she's definitely trying to solidify that reformer uh, SOCON base. And I just think you know, it, it's, it's a disgrace. Tom Parkin, you have a top miss, which didn't necessarily get a lot of traction, in your mind anyway, this year. Uh, yeah, I think a bit of a miss from a media perspective was to really put some eyeballs on what exactly is this private infrastructure bank idea all about. Uh, I've written a number of columns about it. Uh, I think it's really problematic. It is more about trying to guarantee a return on investment to, to investors than it is about building infrastructure for Canadians. And that's not what we were expecting from, from this government. The, the problem here is that it's set up as a private bank. It's going to get private equity, and it's going to demand a higher return on investment. You know, the Bank of Canada can go out right now and borrow at about 1.3%. Uh, percent, uh, and the people who were on the, uh, who, the people who designed the, the, the private infrastructure plan were suggesting it might be about 7%. Now, Todd, if you went down and bought yourself a car and they said, do you want to finance this for 1.3% or 7%, I know what your answer would be. <laughs> but uh, it's the strange thing is that the Liberals have said, let's go for the higher price. Let's spend more money on financing, less money on infrastructure. But then again, this was a panel. This was came from a report from a panel who were all handpicked by Mr. Marneau because they were finance, uh, finance investors. All right, Adrian Battery, your miss has to do with Viva el Comandante. Absolutely. I think hands down the biggest political miss this year, and of course it came in the tail, the end of the year, was uh, just, uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's statement on the death of Fidel yeah. Castro. It was an international embarrassment, and it is beginning to... Uh, it's, it's spelling to me, Todd, I think, what, what we are going to see moving into 2017. Um, you know, this, as Lisa said earlier, this was a government that was riding high, no question about it, lots of popularity. And yeah, he still remains high in the polls. But with that said, what Canadians are starting to see is someone who probably is a little bit out of his league, probably has embarrassed us a little bit. And now with all this no nonsense about cash for access and, and this is a sort and then the Liberals actually not tackling it head on. This is what they're going into for, for 2017. But I would say, uh, you know, people paid attention when Canada elected Justin Trudeau as their our prime minister. Now the entire world knows exactly what our prime minister um, has to say. And it was quite embarrassing. I can give you 30 seconds, Lisa. <laughs> well, I, can just I obviously time. completely disagree with what Adrian has to say, but if I have one, if I have 30 seconds, I just want to say this as well. One of the great big misses of this year was the ongoing sexism and misogyny against women in politics. We saw it from Rachel Notley all the way to Michelle Rempel, and every other female MP I've ever met or spoken to has experienced the same in this country. And it's time that women and men all stand up and say enough is enough and we're not going to tolerate this and we're not going to do what's happening south of the border. And women not only should be equal with, at cabinet, we should be equal in general and men and women should start treating each other better. I would hope that we go into 2017 that way. Something I think all four of us can agree on. Thank you. Her to and the I are going to hug now. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. And Tom and I will give you a hug from uh, virtually here, from, from up here at CTV. Thank the you. best to all four, three of you. Thanks so much for this. We'll see you, you in the new year. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, Todd. <laughs>